Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. And you guys are probably sick of pickers by now because in the last two videos we covered regular pickers, then we covered a color picker, and in this video we are now doing a date picker. So again, this is a Swift UI component that is used specifically for letting users pick the date and or time in our apps. Now the date picker has a really nice default UI, but we're gonna look at a couple different ways how we can customize it with different date picker styles to make it look exactly how we want it to look in our apps. All right, so another quick video today. Let's right click the navigator, new file. This will be a Swift UI view and we're gonna call this one date picker bootcamp. Once you're inside, go ahead and click resume on the canvas. So again, the date picker is just a very easy way to let your users select a date from the calendar and it can also be used for time. So let's get started by adding a date picker and we open the parentheses and there's a whole bunch of completions. So we're going to start with the most basic completion, which I believe is this second one here. It's a string protocol for the title and just a selection with a binding date. So let's click enter on that. For the title, let's make it select a date. And for the binding, we see that we need a binding date. So let's create that variable. We'll do at state var selected date of type date. And we'll set it equal to today's date, which in Swift, we can just do date, open and close parentheses. And this will automatically do the current date. So whatever it is right now, let's bind it with the money sign selected date. Click or zoom on our canvas and we should be able to see the first date picker on our screen. Okay, so if we press play on the live preview, we can see the date picker and if I click on the date, we can actually change the date. So I'm gonna click on February 9th now and we can also change the time. So this is a scrollable thing at the bottom here. We can do, I'll do, we'll do seven o'clock on February 9th. And if we click outside the date picker, we can see that it updates automatically. So this makes it so easy to let our users pick a date. And it also is a pretty nice UI, right? This, this pop-up actually looks pretty good. So before we move on, I just wanna show you guys that we can change the format of this date picker. So first we can change the color of this blue and in Swift UI pretty much anytime you see that default blue, chances are that that blue is coming from the accent color. So you can just change the dot accent color and we can change this to color dot red and now our day picker is in red. I don't think we can actually change this little gray area, but I'm just going to leave that for now. And date pickers also have styles. So we can call dot date picker style. And we can start typing in here, date picker style, and there are a whole bunch. I don't think they're all available on the iPhone. Some might be for like the Mac. But if we select the compact date picker style, open and close parentheses, you'll see that it is exactly what we have already. This is the compact format. So let's change this up, and I'm just going to put this on another line so that we can comment it out. So I'll comment out the compact and let's look at another format. Let's type in date picker style and let's use the graphical date picker style. Open and close parentheses and now you'll see that this by default is already in that calendar position. So if you don't want that compact look and you want just this initial look so that this is already on the screen for your users to select, uh, all you have to do is add the graphical date picker style. And one more I want to show you guys. Let's comment this out and we'll do date picker style. And we can do the wheel date picker style. And this one is just a wheel, just like you probably expected. And users can pick the date like this. They can pick the time. And uh, it also looks pretty cool. So I'm going to actually comment out the wheel picker and go back to the compact for a second. I just want to show you guys that we can also decide if we want the date and the time or one or the other. So this date picker, we used one of the completions. I'm going to use a different one this time. So let's comment out the date picker and let's add another date picker. Open the parentheses. And last time we used this string protocol with selection. This time I'm going to use sling, string protocol selection and displayed components. 
So again, we will do select a date. We will bind it with the money sign selected date. And this time we have displayed components. And here it just needs us to tell it what components we want it to use. So if we make this an array with the with the square brackets and inside the array we press the period, we can then add all of the components we want. So by default it is at it is dot date and dot hour and minute. So this is the default as we saw already. But if we only wanted one of these, if we only wanted the date. We could do just dot date and delete this. Now we have just the date, or we can do the opposite, and we can do just the hour and minute, and now we just have the time. I'll put these both back, and one final thing I want to show you guys. Let's comment out this date picker. Let's do one more date picker. Open the parentheses. And this time we are looking for the string protocol selection and range completion. So let's click enter on that one. The string protocol will be select a date again. We will again bind it to money sign selected date. And this time it's looking for a closed range of date. So it basically wants us to tell it what dates can we pick from. So if you have a situation where a user can only select from certain dates like a certain week or a certain month, then you can add a closed range in here. So I'm going to create two variables at the top here. Let's do let starting date of type date and let's set the starting date equal to calendar dot current dot date from and then it's looking for date components. So let's add date components. Open the parentheses and we get this crazy completion here, which I'll press enter on and we can then just tell it all of the date components to basically make a date. And all of these parameters are optional. So we only need to include the ones that we actually need. So I'm just going to use this year. So I'm going to delete everything else. Delete all of this. And let's just use from maybe 2018. So we're going to get a quick error message because this calendar current date provides an optional in case this date is not actually available. So we know this is a real date, so it's always going to work. Uh, but but it wants us to explicitly unwrap this to make sure that we do get an actual date here. And we can do that with just this exclamation point. But uh, I try to avoid using these exclamation points whenever possible in our code because it might crash if it ever doesn't work. So instead of that, I'm just going to do two question marks and then today's date. So if this for some reason does not work out, it's just going to put in today's date. The date picker then wouldn't really work as we want, but this should never happen because we know this is a real date. So starting date and then let's make ending date. Let's do let ending date of type date. And we're going to set the ending date equal to today. So date. So this closed range is going to be starting date dot 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 ending date. Let's resume the canvas. And this time when we go to select a date, you'll notice that the furthest ending date that we can actually select is today. We can't select anywhere in the future. And if we tried to change this back to say 2017, 2016, it actually won't let us pick anything before January 1st, 2018. And that's because our starting date was the first day of 2018. So this is perfect for situations when users have to like select their birthday because their birthday is never going to be in the future. So you can have that ending date as today. It also would be perfect if users had to select a date in the future for like an appointment. You could set the starting date as today and then the ending date could be like a month in the future or something like that. And again here we can take this displayed components with the hour and minute brackets and I can copy that and put that in here after to add another to add the displayed components to this initializer and we can again then maybe get rid of the hour and minute if we want and just have the date in here. So now we have a whole completed version with the with the starting and ending date as well as the displayed components. The last and final thing I want to show you guys and it doesn't have to do with the date picker but it has to do with formatting the dates. Uh, so let's create a V stack here. Open the brackets and I'm going to cut this date picker and paste it inside the V stack. 
And above the date picker, let's add text. Selected date is colon. And I'm gonna add another text. And I'm gonna put the selected date dot description. Let's make this dot font dot title so we know what we're looking at here. And I'm showing you this because a lot of times in your app, you're gonna have a date picker, but you actually wanna display the chosen date somewhere else. So like as the title or the selection, or maybe on the next screen when after they picked the date. And if you add the selected date dot description directly to a text, you're gonna see it print out this whole long version of the date with the exact time and seconds and milliseconds. And while that's super accurate, it's not practical. No one actually cares about these milliseconds. So I wanna quickly show you guys how we can format dates. And we can use something called a date formatter. So I'm gonna create a variable at the top. We'll do var date formatter of type date formatter. And I'm gonna open the brackets here. So this will be a computed property. It's basically going to create this variable for us in a couple different steps. So in this brackets, we basically need to return a date formatter. So we'll start by saying let formatter equals date formatter, open and close parentheses. This initializes a new date formatter. And then we're going to return formatter. So this error can go away. This nice computed property is now creating a formatter and returning the formatter. And I just want to customize this formatter. So in here, let's add formatter and dot. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can format this. We're just going to use the date style, which is the most common one. And in here, we can then set this equal to full, medium, long, short. So I'm going to do uh, short. And then instead of having just selected date dot description, we can call date formatter dot string from, and then we can put in our selected date. So we're using that new formatter to create a string from this date. Click resume on the canvas. And we can see that the date is now in short form, which looks much better, much more practical. We can change this around if we want medium. Feb 8, we can do the long version. Let's change it back to short. And we can also do formatter dot time style equals dot short. And now we can get the time, 126 p.m. We can change that to medium or long. We can even go full. So just a quick way, I wanted to show you guys how we can format that date so we can use that date as a string elsewhere in our app. So that's it for this video. You guys are now date picker experts. Date picker is most commonly used for selecting ages or appointments. So you're not gonna need it in every single app, but it is good to know. Hope you guys learned something. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.